Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, June 7th, 2023 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, today I wrote up a little experiment that I actually conducted last week. And the goal of the experiment was uh, to compare how a novice developer would use tools like uh, GitHub Copilot or just simply Googling for code snippets and what the respective security impact would be of code derived either way. As an example, I took a very simple task, a simple form uh, written in PHP where you would collect uh, some data and then insert it into a SQL uh, database. Turns out that uh, GitHub Copilot didn't really worry too much about cross-site scripting, uh, but did proper prepared statements for the SQL queries, so no SQL injection, while the random code snippet that I was able to find via Google to do the same thing, actually from a PHP tutorial, well, it had SQL injection and cross-site scripting. As far as input validation goes, uh, GitHub Copilot, once you sort of came up with the right prompts, meaning you added comments to actually do it, it did a reasonable job with it, and uh, so it can code securely, but it's still something that as a developer, if you're using these tools, you have to really be more aware of and definitely review the code before you just blindly use it. For sites like Stack Overflow or such that you often end up with if you're just Googling uh, for a code, it has been shown that many, many of the samples are insecure, are containing vulnerabilities like SQL injection. Oddly enough, in my little test, I didn't end up with a Stack Overflow sample. But uh, one other caveat here is I actually tried to redo it uh, because I wasn't quite happy with uh, the first uh, recording that I did here. Well, each time you do it, either Copilot or Google is giving you different results, not really fundamentally different or better, but so I just uh, stuck uh, with uh, the first recording I did there. And then we got uh, some interesting patches from uh, Google. Uh, first of all, Android patches. So if you do have a phone that can take patches directly from Google, it's upgrade time in particular, since uh, one of the vulnerabilities, CVE 2022-22706, is already under what they call limited targeted exploitation. And this activity may go back uh, to December. I uh, vaguely remember talking about some attacks against Samsung phones like this in the past, but really hard to get all these uh, zero days straight these days. There are another uh, six or five uh, critical vulnerabilities uh, being patched uh, by this update among a total of 56 vulnerabilities. But it's not the only Google update we got today. We also got updates for uh, Google uh, Chrome. It fixes one single vulnerability, CVE 2023-3079. And well, uh, the reason it only fixes this one vulnerability is because there is already an exploit available for uh, this vulnerability. This is a type confusion in V8, which is the JavaScript engine behind uh, Chromium. And the FBI issued a warning that they're seeing an increase in the use of manipulated photos uh, to create explicit content in sextortion schemes. Now, with sextortion, we sort of have two types. Uh, one is of the simple type, and you've probably seen lots of that where an attacker is just sending a random email claiming that they have some explicit images and content. The more sinister one is where an attacker is actually then using actual images or like what the FBI warns here about the images that were manipulated. And of course, this has gotten a lot easier to do recently with more tools and such to create these 
arbitrary images. The FBI suggests that you're a little bit careful in sharing personal photos. Of course, that helps, but ultimately will not prevent these kind of attacks. I think uh, the best option here is probably to ignore any images that are being used uh, for sextortion and assume that they were created via digital means and are not actual images. Maybe one of the good outcomes of tools being easily available in order to create these images is that actually the value of these images in extortion campaigns becomes less severe. Well, and that's it for today. One announcement Tuesday next week, so about a week from today, depending on, of course, when you're listening uh, to this. Heather, Katie, Stephen, Ed, and myself, uh, we will have a webcast with uh, the RSA conference where we'll basically repeat the RSA panel that we had at the conference. So if you had no chance to attend it there, uh, this will, as far as I know, be open to everybody June 13th, uh, noon Eastern or 9 a.m. Pacific. I'll add a link uh, to the show notes. Hope to see you there. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.